Welcome to 180 Online. My name is Ms. Jess, and I'm just so happy you chose to join us tonight. Uh, just a friendly reminder that if you want to stay up to speed with things that are going on with 180, check us out on Instagram and YouTube. We're always posting and doing things there, me and the leaders, and we just love to uh, just hear from you there. Um, and hopefully it blesses you. Now, let me ask you, how many of you are just tired, tired of this social distancing? Raise your hand. Like I'll raise both hands, my foot kind of thing. You know, I'm just, I'm tired. I, I need to see my friends, like not on a screen. Like I'm done with Zoom conferences or whatever. I, just, I need a hug, you know, stuff like that. And it's easy to kind of get caught up on those sort of like negative things that happen in our lives and negative circumstances we might be in, or even the struggles we might have. You know, maybe it's struggles with identity or insecurities or low self-worth or something bad that's happened to you. And, you know, with that, you know, it's so easy to kind of just become a product of those circumstances. And with this new season at 180, the challenge is to take those negative things, those things that we struggle with, and treat them like a game-changing opportunity. Because ultimately, we were not built to be products of our circumstances. We were made for so much more. And that's why we are calling our new summer season Game Changer. This season, the entire summer, we're gonna be talking about ways that we can treat these circumstances as game-changing opportunities. And this particular month, we have a two-week series, little short series, that none other than the fabulous, awesome, my favorite person in the whole wide world. I mean, I love everybody the same, but I love her just a little bit more. Miss Alana is going to be kicking off this series that we're covering and it's called To Be Honest. Now she's gonna explain a bit more about what the series is about, but before we get to her message, I wanna, let's let's break the ice with a little bit of a question, okay? Got 30 seconds to just ask somebody that's around you. I hope you're not watching this alone. If not, go grab somebody from the other room and have them come and watch the service because it's gonna be a good one. But let's kick off with an icebreaker question and let's say, ask somebody, uh, what's something that they're looking forward to once the social distancing is done? What are you looking forward to? Is it school? Is it being able to go to the beach, to the park, to the mall, to Disney, whatever? Go ahead, 30 seconds, ask somebody that question and we'll get right to our message. All right, one, two, three, let's go. I'm gonna ask you to close your eyes. Take a deep breath and let your eyes close. If we really knew you, what would we know about you? What's it like in your home? You feel safe there, you feel loved. How about when you look in the mirror? Do you like what you see? Does anybody know who you really are? Take a deep breath, open your eyes. Answer the question, if we really knew you, what would we know about you? Please begin. If you really knew me, you'd know that I love secret passageways <laughs> and tunnels. <laughs> um, I think that's what she said, jokes are hilarious. Tell me one thing that's hard about being you, bro. Something's hard about me. I don't know. It's hard to like wake up every day and like, you know, have to go to school and stuff because like I'm trying to get to Michigan State and it's like real hard because both my parents went there and like you know it's a lot of pressure. My grandparents just moved and like it's probably not like a big deal to you guys but like you know that's where we like did all our family stuff so it's like weird. It's not um I 
I really enjoy using chainsaws. Like for real, I love it. Um, You're all over the place. <laughs> I know, it's, it's very random, it's very random. I like it. Thank you. Mitch is a character. He is such a goofball and I didn't think that he was gonna take it seriously because he is such a goof. But then when we got to the serious side, like he definitely broke down and got like right to like his core. He's really like family oriented. I never knew that about him. That's what I got. <laughs> <laughs> you really knew me. You know, I live with my mom, my aunt and my brother. My parents got divorced when I was three or four and he moved to South Carolina. I don't see him and he doesn't talk to me. I feel like that he blames me for a lot of the things that went wrong with him and my mom. Like everything was my fault and I used to think he's even proud of me at all. <laughs> like, I feel like he's proud of my brother. He's doing so great with his life and that. He doesn't even see me anymore. I just miss him. I definitely understand Ashley better now. I always felt like she probably had a life just like, you know, pretty similar to mine. She just decided to wear like, you know, all black and like, you know, not really talk to the same people that I do and stuff. She's not what she appears to be. But if you really knew me, you know that going into my sophomore year, my oldest brother passed away in a um, longboarding accident. He just went out to have some fun one night and he broke his neck. Me and my brother weren't talking because of other family issues and I didn't like him for a lot of reasons of like causing my dad a lot of pain. It's rough. Still is. Still feels like it happened yesterday. There's not a time that goes by that like it's not like in the back of my head or I don't think about it. She's gone through a lot with her brother and she just bottles that up and it's sad to hear but I was so impressed with how she's able to handle that from day to day. Um, if you guys really knew me um, throughout my life it's always been about you know hey get good grades, you're gonna go to a good college. That was always my mom's philosophy. My dad, it was, yeah, definitely get good grades, but he was more of a sports kind of guy. I feel as though whenever I screw up or, you know, I don't get the best in something or I fail at a sport, I just, you know, I fail them as a son, you know, and then I just screw up more and more. Like, I don't sleep too often nowadays. I just lay there thinking about things, like kind of a spiral downward to kind of a little depression kind of deal. And uh, that's when I started drinking uh, heavily, like really bad. I just continued throughout um, sophomore and junior year. This is a really bad, bad habit. I need to stop. I really need to stop. I thought that Brian was one of the real jockey types and everyone looked up to him and he was so happy and so cool all the time. But after hearing what he had to say, I feel more respect for him. It changed how I looked at him. And if you really knew me, every night my parents would fight and I used to have to sleep in cars because it used to be so bad because I couldn't stay in the house with them fighting. Then my whole family, I got a new boyfriend and they didn't like him, so my family kept calling me a slut and I get good grades and I don't get in trouble and I don't understand how I'm the slut and I'm the bad person. I would have never in a million years imagined the things that she had gone through. I don't know how people can treat her that way and believe that like she comes to school every day. I would not be able to if I were her. It's time wrap your arms around those people. Pull them in close, give them all the love they deserve just for being who they are. Hey everyone, uh, it's Miss Alana here from 180. If you don't know me, um, I volunteer here at his house on Tuesdays um, for 180, the youth group that we do. And I'm just so happy and glad that just give me the opportunity to be able to speak to you guys um, this Tuesday. Um, and the fact that we're still able to, even though it's through screen, connect and um, just talk to you guys and influence you. and. Um, just teach you more about like who Jesus is. Um, so if you see me looking down, I'm looking at my notes. Um, but yeah, I miss you guys. I can't wait to see you again. I miss hanging out and talking um, and just having a good time with you all. So I'm really excited for when we can all be together on Tuesdays again. 
Um, but it's officially almost summer. I don't know if school is done for uh, you high schoolers, but um, we're starting a new season. And as you guys know, we always do a theme um, in the beginning of every season. And so this year's theme for the summer season is called Game Changer, okay? Um, and the whole idea of this, the whole theme about this is that we know um, that there are difficult situations that happen to us in our life that can bring us down and discourage us. Um, and I know for a fact that you guys understand that um, and know that firsthand. And so we just want to show you guys how these difficult situations and circumstances don't have to define who you are, don't have to define your life, but that you can view them as opportunities for you to grow and change your life for the better. Um, and so the first message of the series, Miss Jess entrusted me with this. I can't believe she did that. Um, it's called To Be Honest. Um, that's the first series that we're doing, and this lesson today is called I Am Messy. So it's to be honest, I am messy. And if you were being with honest with um, the people around you, who would you really be? Who, um, who are you? Do they know the real you, or do they just know a portion of you um, that you put on display? And so... I have a little illustration. Um, I personally don't remember when I first learned this, but maybe some of you guys have heard it before. Um, but it said that with icebergs, when you see an iceberg, um, well, for us, a picture of an iceberg, because we live in Florida, what is an iceberg? Um, but when you see a picture of an iceberg or an iceberg or whichever, you only see 10% of it. So that little portion that's hanging on top of the water is only 10% of the iceberg. The rest of the iceberg is under the surface of the water. It's below the water. Um, and it's concealed from like the first glance, from first sight, like as you're going around. If you guys know the story of Titanic, the reason it sunk is because they tried to dodge an iceberg and didn't realize that there was more ice underneath the water and it scraped underneath. Um, and so, the only way for someone to see truly how large an iceberg is, is to look below the surface, look under the water, look deeper and see the rest of the iceberg. And that's where this expression, the tip of the iceberg comes from. When someone says, oh, that's just the tip of the iceberg. They're basically saying, it's like, you only had a taste. Like you don't really see the full picture. You don't see everything. And so, I know you guys watched the video before um, that came on, and in that video, the teens did an activity where they exposed things in their life that no one really knew about them. Each person um, had this persona that they were showing, this kind of um, uh, image that they were giving off, and for them, that was just the tip of their iceberg. The rest of who they were, were was hidden, and people were shocked to find out the things that were underneath in their iceberg. And so I would ask you, if someone looked at the tip of your iceberg, who would they see? Are they gonna see someone who's positive and joyful and always having a good time, nothing can bring them down? Are they seeing someone who's angry and defensive and no matter what they do they're gonna lash out at you and they're always getting in fights like you can't look at them the wrong way without them trying to throw hands is it that they're gonna see someone who's always got the best joke like you're the funniest person in the room they look to you for laughter and having a good time that way like you are the 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 funny guy um or are they gonna see someone who is super confident like no matter what someone says about you, like they don't bring you down because you know who you are. You know your worth. You you just have um, you exude this confidence where nothing can can bring you down because you know. And that's like the the things that they see. That's the tip of your iceberg, right? But what about the rest of you? What about the other ninety percent? The part that isn't so pretty, the part that you don't want people to see. 
Are they going to find out that the real you is actually really messy? Are they going to are are you, are they going to find out that like deep down you're actually deeply insecure that you don't have everything together and you question your worth? Are they going to find out that you struggle with depression that you you put on this face to to be the funny person but really deep down like you don't feel that at all? Are they going to find out that you come from an abusive home that your parents aren't taking care of you when they're hurting you or whoever it is that you're living with that it's an abusive home and for some of you that could be real because there's a reason that you're here at his house right now it's, it's not a secret so it's like what is that or maybe it's something where you hate yourself so much that you've thought about committing suicide and maybe you've even tried it before i know for myself I never wanted anyone to see the mess that I had created for myself. Um, back in high school, I wanted everyone to think that I was funny, that I was great at sports. I played three sports in high school and that I was confident. Like I didn't care what people thought. I dressed funky. I didn't care. Um, I, I always wanted to laugh. I always wanted to have a good time. But deep down, there was this deep rooted sense of like, I'm not good enough, I'm not worthy. And I also was struggling with being addicted to pornography. And I never wanted anybody to know that about me. I want them to see the good part, the, the tip of my iceberg. And I mean, I, I personally would never want someone to see the messed up parts of me. And I, I imagine neither would you guys. And so the crazy thing is that no matter how hard I tried to hide my insecurities and, and my addiction, and no matter how hard um, you might try to hide um, your insecurity, your anger, your abuse, whatever, like there is someone who already sees all of these things. They, they see it and they, and they even know more. They know more about you than you know about yourself. There's nothing that we can hide from him because he sees all things. Every messed up part of you and me, he knows it all and he still loves us. God knew about my addiction before I even knew I had a problem. And yet he still loved me and he pulled me out of that. God knows about your drug problem. God knows about your abuse. God knows about your depression. He knows about your insecurity. He knows every single part of you, good and bad, and he loves you through it. It doesn't turn him away. It doesn't turn him the opposite direction as you might think the messy parts of us would do. It actually, it, he tells us to draw closer to him because of all our mess. And so I wanted to share you guys, um, uh, share you guys, share with you guys a few verses. In Romans 5, verse 8, it says, But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So while we were still the messed up, um, funky, no good parts of us that we believed and we felt, Christ died for us. And he died for us out of love. Ephesians 2, 4 says, But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ. Even when we were dead in transgressions, which is our sins, dead in our sins, it is by grace you have been saved. And so this verse tells us that God did all of this. He he sent Christ down to die for us. He um, gave, showed us grace and saved us, even though we were filthy, dirty, messy, because of his great love for us, his great love for you, because he loves you. God chooses to love us fully knowing all the ugly parts that we think nobody could love. And he invites you to be in relationship with him so that he, so that you would know the messy part of you is not what defines you. He wants you to have your identity in him 
and who he calls us to be as believers. And you would say, who, who are the believers? Like, how can I have my identity in Christ? How can I have my identity outside of all this messy stuff that I'm stuck in? And Ephesians 1.5 says, He predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will. And this says that before you existed, before you were you, God adopted you as his own. He chose you. He knew your mess. He knew it was, was messed up about you. And he chose you anyways. And that's who the believers are. When we put our trust in God and we put our trust in who Jesus Christ is, he, he helps take care of us. He helps clean us. And so those messy things about us that we see that are so bad, like he cleans us up and he makes us new. And we no longer have to be defined by the messy things that we think should define us, but we are now defined by being with Jesus Christ, by being um, God's child. We are, as it says, co-heirs with Christ, which means we are um, equal because of the fact that Christ died for us. We can be on that level of sonship with Jesus in the eyes of God the Father. And so I just want to harp in the fact that like God did all of this because he loves you guys. He sees your hurt and he sees what you guys are going through. And it may feel like he's like, no, I don't want any of that. I don't, I don't, I don't dig that. Like you need to clean up before you come to me. But it's the exact opposite. I want you guys to know that. You don't need to clean yourself up before you go to God. He's saying, take your dirty, sloppy, messy self and come to me so that I can clean you because I love you. Okay? That's what Christ says. That's what God says to us. And I really, really hope that you guys can believe that. All right? Um, I just want to pray really quick. It may be a little bit awkward because I know I'm on video, um, but you don't have to close your eyes or anything like that. But I just I, I want you guys to hear um, my words and hear my heart for you and just know that we're praying for you. All of us as leaders, we're praying for you all the time. And I just want you guys to be in um, this moment with me. So dear God, I thank you that you just give me your words to be able to speak to um, these kids and speak to them and um, to show them more of who you are, God. I pray that in this time, this weird time of being stuck inside, that they may see your goodness in it, that they may feel your comfort. And I pray that they would be able to know more about who you are and see more about who you are because you're good and you love us. Lord, I pray that after all this is over, that we can look back at this time and and really know that you were guiding our, our guiding us and and protecting us and keeping us safe. And I just can't wait to be with the kids again, Lord. Um, I just thank you and I pray for the rest of their week that it may be fruitful um, and that they may be able to see you working in their lives. I thank you so much for them. I love them and I miss them. In the name of Jesus, Amen. Thank you guys for letting me talk and speak to you. Um, again, I can't wait to see you guys. I miss you guys. Until next time. Man, wasn't that a great message by Miss Alana? Let's give it up for her. Hand claps, Miss Alana. Thank you so, so much for joining us tonight. I pray that you all were just blessed by the message. We've actually got a few discussion questions coming up in a second. Uh, but before that, um, if you liked what you saw, uh, show your support by liking, subscribing to this page, um, and check out all the content that we have uh, for you all. Um, so again, we got some questions coming up for you. Take your time, hit pause if the conversation's really good. Um, and then once that's done, we'll see you next week. We love you guys. Take care. Stay safe. Peace.